Last month, I launched my very first Kickstarter for my game Gigasword, an action puzzle metroidvania in which you wield a massive sword with real weight. Going into Kickstarter, I did a ton of research and preparation, but that being said, there is a lot that I could have done better throughout the campaign. So today, I'd like to tell you guys what I wish I had known before launching on Kickstarter. I'm Jack Breen, and this is Hybrid Theory. I'm going to be splitting this lesson up into three different segments. Pre-campaign, which should take place about two to four months before you launch. Campaign setup, which should take place about a month before you launch. And during campaign, which should take place during your campaign. Now, I think it's worth mentioning before I get into this that I am in no way an expert on Kickstarter. These are just my personal takeaways from my experience on the platform. Every campaign is different, so I would encourage you to take this advice for what it is and apply it as best you can to your own situation. All right, so let's start with pre-campaign. The number one thing I wish I had done sooner is reach out to streamers and YouTubers, and the earlier you can start this step, the better. I spent most of my days during the campaign emailing people asking them to try out the demo, but ideally I should have been doing this months before the campaign started. Some of the busier streamers take a while to respond, and during a campaign, time is of the essence. Now, to successfully reach out to people like this, we need to answer two questions. Which streamers do I reach out to, and what exactly do I say to them? Let's start with the first question. Deciding which YouTubers and streamers to contact is a matter of figuring out your target audience. When I first started game development, target audience was something that I didn't really think about too much. I was making these 2D games, and I kind of just figured that anybody who enjoyed 2D games would probably like what I was making. While this might be partially true, there's a very easy way to get a concise idea of who your game will appeal to, and it'll shape the way that you market your project for the rest of its development. To find your target audience, all you need to do is ask yourself what games your game is similar to. For instance, Gigasword takes its inspiration primarily from titles like Zelda, Metroid, Shovel Knight, Axiom Verge, and Gato Roboto. Once you have a list of games like this, you just go on YouTube or Twitch, find streamers who are playing these games, and reach out to them. Most YouTubers have their emails in their About section, and the same is true for Twitch. If you can't find somebody's email address, see if you can DM them on Twitter or even Instagram. So now we have some people to contact, but how exactly do you reach out to them? Hi, I'm such a huge fan, and I was wondering if maybe you, you could t take some time to play the game that I made? Not like that. Hey there, I, uh, been working on this video game, and, you know, do yourself a favor and play it, okay? Not like that either. <clears throat> I started game development when I was seven years old. And definitely not like that. You don't need to beg and plead, you don't need to come off as cool, and you certainly don't need to tell your whole life story. A successful email to a YouTuber or streamer should be clear and concise. Let's walk through it together. Let's start by introducing yourself and your game. Hello streamer, my name is Jack and I'm a solo developer making an action puzzle metroidvania called Gigasword. Tell them why you're messaging them. I just launched a new demo for the game and I've been looking for cool people who might enjoy it. I like to include a sentence about why I've chosen them specifically, to add a personal touch to the message. Try looking through the channel and seeing what games they like. I'm a huge fan of your channel, and seeing as you enjoy games like Shovel Knight and Axiom Verge, I figured I should reach out. Make them interested with a one-sentence elevator pitch. Follow up with an invitation to play for themselves. Gigasword is essentially Shovel Knight, Zelda, Metroid, and Dark Souls put into a blender. If you're interested, you can find the Steam page here, with a link. Thank them for their time and let them know that their response would mean a lot to you. Don't be overly sappy, just show them that you care and that you're not some soulless game dev robot. This is the overall format that I used. It's not perfect, but it should at least give you a good starting point. Depending on your game, you may want to make certain changes or add more information accordingly. Before we move on, the last thing I want to mention for pre-campaign is that you should absolutely have a playable demo. Creating a demo that you can send out to people should be your top priority during the early months of preparation, and having something that people can actually play during your campaign will be a huge incentive for backers. That being said, let's move on to our next chapter. Okay, so now it's time to actually build your Kickstarter page. When I was getting my campaign ready, I looked at the pages of some of my closest inspirations, such as Shovel Knight and Flynn Son of Crimson, as well as plenty of other games whose pages I admired, like Time Spinner, Blasphemous, and Crowsworn. 
I basically ended up making a list for each game and took note of what they included in their pages, and in what order. These games all seem to include the same core sections. Things like art style, story, characters, and rewards all had their own dedicated paragraphs. Here's how I chose to structure the Gigasword page. We start with the elevator pitch, then we move on to a feature list, then story and characters, combat and upgrades, puzzles and mechanics, art style, music, reward breakdown, who am I, journey so far, why Kickstarter, links, and risks and challenges. This is a lot, so let's break it down. Every page should start with an elevator pitch. The first thing that page visitors read should quickly give them an overview of what this game is about, one short paragraph that focuses on the game's core ideas. For example, Gigasword's pitch reads as follows. Gigasword is an action puzzle metroidvania in which you wield a huge sword that weighs you down. By sticking the sword in the ground, you're able to jump higher, swim, crawl through tight spaces, and more. But there's a catch. You become unable to attack. Many of the puzzles revolve around sticking the sword into interactive objects that transport it around the room to areas you wouldn't have been able to reach while holding it. With Cataclysm on the horizon, it's up to you to ascend the Ancient Tower and recover the God Crystal, Gnosis. After this initial pitch, I added a second short paragraph, which reads, Gigasword is a love letter to the games that have shaped my life. It aims to combine the action and platforming of a game like Shovel Knight, the Puzzle Box Dungeons of The Legend of Zelda, and the Metroid-esque progression of titles like Axiom Verge into one cohesive and faithful experience. As you can see, deliberately mentioning other games that are similar to yours is a great way to draw people in. Rather than struggling to explain everything about your project in a shortened format, sometimes it's faster and more cohesive to just say, it's like this plus this. Fans of those games will immediately be drawn in, and everyone else will at least have something to reference. The second section of this page is a quick feature list. This is a bullet point section detailing the main features of the game, such as demon slaying action, puzzle solving sections, and a rich story. These sound like pretty run-of-the-mill features, but that's okay, the point of this section is just to break down what this game includes in terms of gameplay. Think of this part as the back of your game's imaginary box. You know how they always have a few pictures with small captions detailing what you can expect? This is basically the same thing. Try to keep this section clear and concise, while still injecting your own creativity into the descriptions so as to stand out from the crowd. From here on out, there's no correct way to order these sections. Some games choose to get right into reward descriptions, others will jump into combat mechanics and so on. For Gigasword, I decided to make the story breakdown the first thing to lead off with. After the story section, I took some time to detail the main characters and show off some concept art. Following this section, we start to get into the meat of the game. I let off with a section about what Ezra can do with and without the sword. Some of the level mechanics are detailed, and further down I explain the upgrade system and unlockable items. Essentially, this section gives readers an idea of what gameplay actually entails, rather than just broad descriptions. Sections like this are going to vary heavily depending on what game you're trying to make. Overall, my advice would be to focus on specific game mechanics and go into detail as to what makes them interesting. Talk about what abilities your main character has, what power-ups there are, what kind of puzzles or traps to look out for, or maybe give a description of your gameplay loop. Maybe your game has a cool hub world, or a town building feature. I can't tell you how to describe your own game, but whatever you choose to write, your goal should be to make readers excited. Oh, and one last thing, use GIFs. Lots and lots of GIFs. screen to gif is a free GIF recorder application that works great. Some campaigns even snaz up their gifts with custom borders, which is a great way to add a professional touch to your page. After you detail the gameplay of your game, a good next step is to shift to development-related stuff. I chose to talk first about art style, and I detail things like the color palette and the animation style. For the music section, I talked a little bit about what software the music is made in, and where it takes its inspiration from. Following this section, I decided to change gears and talk about rewards. I made this chart detailing which rewards are included at what tiers, which is a good visual guide for readers who might be unsure of which tier to pledge at. Below the chart, the physical rewards are shown off with quick descriptions about each. I chose to only focus on the high tier stuff for this section because I figured the low tier rewards were pretty self-explanatory, but some games have really nice reward sections that include everything along with stylized pictures for each tier. If I had had a bit more time, I probably would have done things this way, because another thing I wish I had known earlier is that rewards are just as important as your game. While plenty of people are going to back you solely because they like your game, there is an undeniable section of the audience that will only support if the rewards stand out to them enough. That's why you should not only be putting a lot of thought into what your rewards are, but you should also make sure they look appealing on your page. When it comes to making your readers excited about your rewards, presentation is everything. After talking about rewards, the last part of my page details who I am and what my level of experience is. 
It's important to let backers know who exactly they're supporting, as you're much more likely to get positive responses if you and your team come across as real people. Talk about what got you into game dev, what some of your favorite games are, and what inspired you to start this project. I also included a Why Kickstarter section, which is a good way to break down your costs and explain why you're asking for the amount that you are. After that, there's a Risks and Challenges section, which is actually a mandatory section on your page. This is basically your disclaimer where you acknowledge responsibility for what goes on during the campaign. For Gigasword, I wrote a quick paragraph explaining that this was my first time on Kickstarter, but that I would vow to handle things as best I could no matter what challenges came up. I then thanked readers for visiting the campaign, and with that, we have a full look at a finished Kickstarter page. Like I said before, these sections can technically be ordered in any way, so there are probably sections that I've left out here. Depending on your project, you may want to reorder things, add new sections, or leave some of these sections out entirely. Overall, as long as you start with your pitch, give a feature breakdown, detail what makes your game unique, showcase your rewards, and introduce yourself, you should have the core pieces of a great page. Let's move on to Chapter 3. Now if you're like me, you might be thinking that once you hit launch, you can just sit back, relax, and watch the money come your way. I found out very quickly that that is not the case. Once the Kickstarter is active, you'll have to spend every day posting on social media, answering questions, and continuing to reach out to streamers and YouTubers. Twitter and YouTube have always been my main methods of posting about my work, and I had been told for years that Reddit was a great place to market games. However, the few experiences that I had on Reddit were confusing and honestly quite off-putting. Reddit has a lot of rules, and if you don't follow them, you'll be promptly crucified by the community, or at least the mods. Fortunately for you, we're going to go over the best subreddits for marketing your game and how to post on them. The biggest subreddit for gaming is the aptly named r gaming. This is a visual-based subreddit, meaning that videos and GIFs are what do best here. Posts on R gaming vary widely, between memes, news, gameplay, and tons more. So if you're looking to promote your own project, a good post idea could be something like, I just launched my first game on Kickstarter, Gigasword, an action puzzle Metroidvania featuring a huge sword. Then you just attach some sweet gameplay and send it off into the world. It's also a good idea to post a link to your campaign in the comments of your post. R slash Indie Gaming is another great sub to post to. If you're familiar with Twitter, this is probably the closest Reddit equivalent to game dev style tweeting. Grab a cool gif of your game, title it something interesting, and mention that you're on Kickstarter. R slash Games is an interesting one, as it's more geared towards discussions rather than just blatant marketing. I didn't end up using it for Gigasword, but nevertheless, if you're into writing and have an idea for a blog-style post about your game, it could be the place to do it. Lastly, try posting on subreddits for games similar to yours. This goes back to our notes on target audience. For instance, if your game is similar to Animal Crossing, try posting over on the Animal Crossing subreddit. Each sub will have different rules that you'll have to be careful to follow if you don't want to face the wrath of God, but any chance that you have to expand your audience is worth taking. Another big part of keeping your audience engaged is the use of Kickstarter updates. These are posts that appear on your campaign page, and anyone who's backed you will get an email notification every time you create one. Common update posts include things like, we're halfway there, or we're entering the final week. One popular trend that I've seen among campaigns is to treat these updates like devlog posts. Each week, games will focus on a certain aspect of development and use this time to reveal new things, like environments or weapons. Trying to create these updates on the fly can be pretty stressful, so my advice to you here would be to have all of your posts planned out in advance. My strategy during Gigasword's campaign was to post every Monday and Thursday, but you can post as few or as many of these updates as you like. I would just keep in mind that your backers are emailed every time you post, so maybe try not to blow up people's inboxes too much. These updates are also a great opportunity for cross-promotion. Most of my update posts for Gigasword included shoutouts for other games that were on Kickstarter at the time, and those games did the same for me in their posts. This allows fans of one game to discover the other. Most developers are very eager to cross-promote, as there's really no downside, so don't be afraid to reach out to different games and ask if they'd like to do shoutouts. Aside from posting occasional updates, the biggest objective during your campaign should just be to raise awareness overall, whether that means tweeting every day, posting vlogs or updates on YouTube, making memes, posting to Reddit, and flyers! Don't forget about the flyers. Whatever methods you choose, don't rest until the last day is over. You've only got 28 days, so make every one of them worth it. I think this pretty much covers everything that I wanted to mention today. Running a Kickstarter campaign is one of the most demanding things I've ever done, but it's also been one of the most rewarding. Hopefully what we've talked about today can help you guys to one day start your own journey on Kickstarter. For now, let's go over what we've learned. 
You should start by having a playable demo, whether you plan on making it public or exclusively for streamers. Whatever the case may be, having something that people can actually get their hands on is going to be monumental in getting them to back your game. Reach out to streamers and YouTubers and do it early. Remember our notes on target audience and start compiling a list of people to reach out to. Keep your messages to them short and sweet, no need to bluff or go way into detail, just be yourself and get their attention. When it comes to building your Kickstarter page, there are multiple ways you can order things, but the core sections that we identified are definitely must-haves. Start with an elevator pitch, follow up with a feature breakdown, and then include sections on mechanics, rewards, and a quick bio about yourself and your team. Speaking of rewards, these are just as important as your game, so don't just throw together random ideas. Think really critically about things that will mesh well with your project, and what kind of rewards your target audience would enjoy. Reddit is a great place to post about your Kickstarter, as long as you follow the rules for each subreddit. And if you're not already using Twitter or Facebook to promote your game, then you absolutely should be. The most important thing for campaign success is that you start building your audience as early as possible. The more time you give yourself before launch, the better. Alright you guys, I think that's all I have to say. There's probably a lot more advice that could be given on this subject, so if you guys have any suggestions, please feel free to comment below. Speaking again to my own campaign, Gigasword finished its Kickstarter on March 3rd. We raised over $40,000, so again, a massive thank you to everybody who came out and supported. And if this is your first time hearing about Gigasword, you can go ahead and play the free demo on Steam or Itch. Also feel free to wishlist and hop on the official Discord where you can follow the game's development. Of course, subscribing to this channel is another great way to stay updated about Gigasword, and if you really want to support, you can also consider joining the Patreon, where for just a dollar a month, you get to view these videos a day early, and you also get to show up in these credits right here. Huge thank you as always to everybody for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. I started game development when I was seven years old. <laughs>